for watching another episode of Heart of the Dragon. I'm so excited to be here today. And if you like our show, we would love it if you would subscribe to us. You can also hit the bell for notifications. We have a blog that we have as well, and you can check us out and even subscribe for a blog if you would like. Um, today, I want to talk some more about my diet. Um, in some previous videos, I talked about my love-hate relationship with food because of the condition that I have. And I've also talked about my passion about gardening and using things natural out of my yard and my garden to cook and juice and prepare food. So um, I've been meeting with my practitioner. I just got past another flare up with a Lyme co-infection. I'm still in remission with Lyme though, yay! But I did have a flare up and then a bout of flu recently. So I've been kind of um, going up and down with my health. And my practitioner has been talking to me a long time about the lectins in my diet. And he had a serious talk with me this last time and told me that he really strongly recommends I make some changes. So I, uh, this summer, I've been bracing myself and preparing myself for this. Um, I am currently in the middle, about halfway done reading this book called The Plant Paradox by Dr. Stephen Gundry. And this is a book recommended by my practitioner. So I've decided to try Gundry's diet. And we're going to be starting in a week or two. And I've been... Meanwhile, preparing myself for that. So um, this book talks about the lectins in your diet and why they're bad. And so I'm going to be working on that. Um, just very, very quickly, because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Lectins are the part of any fruit and they're part of any vegetable that has a seed in it. And a lot of times in a lot of vegetables found in the peels and the seeds. And it's the part of uh, fruits and vegetables, it's like their, match, their natural defense mechanism. And for people like me, when I eat them, it causes an autoimmune reaction, which just means that my body recognizes a foreign agent. And it's kind of doing the lectin, which is doing its job for the vegetable, is to protect the vegetable or fruit from invaders. Well, it's causing my body to also invade itself, I guess, causing an autoimmune reaction. So right now I'm researching what lectins are. And um, one, I'm going to have to completely remove them out of my diet shortly. And then, and, that, and then I'm going to have to reintroduce them in a different type of cooking preparation because the only way to eat foods that are lectins is by pressure cooking. So I've been working on that. And um, I'm sure I'll do videos down the road about that so I can give, give you more details. But today I'm going to talk about canning because... That's one way you can pressure cook food. So I've had a fun summer with gardening and I've talked about some of the fun things in my garden. Um, most of them are lectin foods, except for the greens. So the greens and the beets and the carrots and I think the turnips are the only foods that aren't high in lectin. So I just want to talk a little bit about if you're going to can your food, because that's what I ended up doing. I went on what I'm going to call a crazy woman canning craze this uh, summer and I canned, um, I'm still not done, but I canned at least 80 jars of stuff. And so I'm gonna show you right now what some of my favorites are and some of the necessary things that you need for canning. So first of all, when you're canning, um, for me, I do not have a pressure canner, which would be awesome, I guess, if you're canning, that's uh, the most recommended way. I have the old type of pressure cooker and so I did with my canning what you call doing a um, a water bath canning method of sealing the can, which is the old fashioned way. So when you're canning, the first thing you need to do if you are going on a lectin free diet is you have to still pressure cook whatever you can that has lectins in it. And so my husband bought me this, this thing has been like my favorite cooking thing of all time now. I use it um, not daily, but I use it several times a week. It's called an Instapot and it has this awesome pressure cooking feature. And I tell you, I love this thing is well worth the money and I use it all the time. And so I've been using this Instapot for all of my, um, canning of lectin foods, even my pickles. All right. When you're canning, um, you need some type of preservative agents and things to keep it safe. So a big one is salt. I um, can't tolerate regular salt or canning salt, so I go to the Swanson vitamin store and I order in bulk Himalayan crystal salt. And so I use that for all my salt for canning and that works really good. I, uh, my kids love the taste of it and I, I just uh, make sure I always have Himalayan salt because that is the uh, 
from the testing I've done with my practitioners and with discussion, it is Himalayan is the safest salt when it comes to um, sea salt because a lot of sea salt carries mercury and other things and iodized salt or salt that is uh, processed has chemicals in it that my body personally can't tolerate. Okay, and then you want to have some type of acid. So my favorite is organic apple cider vinegar with the mother. So I keep, I keep that on hand and I use it for a lot of things in the household and I use it for my canning. Some people can't tolerate it and there's times that I haven't been able to tolerate it. My body is kicking in too much histamine because it is high in histamine. So if you have a condition like mast cell disorder or a histamine condition, this may not work for you, but um, it seems like um, I was doing well with it for a while and it seems like I'm tolerating it again, even with having a history of SIBO, because SIBO is another condition that sometimes um, apple cider vinegar can aggravate. So I um, found this works out really great, especially for pickles and salsa. It um, adds a great flavor to it and um, it just works well as a, as a preservative and it's got some great qualities to it. Again, you wanna make sure you have organic and you wanna make sure it has the mother. The mother is, um, it's just, a, it's a part of the apple cider vinegar that uh, I think it's, I don't know if it's an enzyme or what it is, but it's uh, what makes it um, good for your body and good for your intestines. Another option for acidity is, Fresh lemon. A lot of times when they say um, when you make like canned tomatoes or salsa that you should put lemon juice in it and that will will keep it preserved and from going rancid. Um, you could do that or you could do the, the apple cider vinegar or both I guess. Um, if you're going to do a lemon make sure it's organic. So you can either squeeze the juice in there or you can even just put a lemon wedge right in there with it. And then you want to use fresh herbs. And so the example I'm using now, I do a lot of herbs for my garden that I add to for flavor, but this is um, dill. Um, I ran out of dill from my herb garden because it is my favorite herb. And so I've been buying at the health food store. I did see, um, I have been growing some dill and I see that some is now coming up again, but it's not enough for canning. So I go to the whole food store and I buy a bunch of dill and then I use that for um, especially my pickles and stuff. And then I use it in a lot of my cooking as well. So those are the, for me, the primary ingredients. And also you wanna have water. And when you use water, you wanna use either a good filtered or bottled water. I prefer what is called Berkey water, which I filter myself. And Berkey water filters out all the toxins. Now I'm just gonna show you, um, like I mentioned earlier, I have done, oh, probably at least 80 jars this year of different produce from the garden. So I'm just going to show you what some of my favorites are. All right, this right here is, this is rhubarb um, with blueberry. The blueberry I actually got at the store. It's organic blueberry with rhubarb and a little bit of apple from my apple trees. And then in this, um, I actually added some peppermint and ginger just for extra flavor. My husband thought that was pretty disgusting and he tried some and he's like, oh, how can you eat that? But I like the taste of it. And you could use it, you can eat it straight or you could make it into dessert or different things like that. Um, I just like to eat it straight and I like to um, maybe add a little ghee or some coconut oil or something with it. Um, I also have applesauce. This is actually for my son. I made, it's honey applesauce. Um, I used some raw locally grown honey and that was in the jar. It was actually a honey jar and once we were done with it. Um, I like to do um, apples in different ways. I Sometimes I add ginger or peppermint or I do it plain. Sometimes I mix it with the rhubarb. And then what I like to do with both the rhubarb and the applesauce is I mix it with some coconut oil and I put on little ice cube trays and then I freeze it um, after I open the, the jars and then I, I, I keep the cubes and I just have a cube or two at a time and I put, I like to um, have coconut oil on it and maybe some ghee and it almost tastes like ice cream for me. That's the closest I can have to ice cream or sherbet. It's got like an ice cream sherbet taste. Um, sometimes I may add a little um, uh, frozen cucumber or a little frozen avocado with it too for just a little extra kick. Um, the cucumber I mentioned is actually a lectin food and so I've tried to do the seedless and peel them but I, it's a little iffy right now if I'm going to be able to continue to do that because I'm still a little concerned about the lectins even in the what they call seedless or English cucumbers. 
So speaking of cucumbers, I have pickles. I've made, these are actually, I ran out of jars, so I'm using some old coconut oil jars that I did for this. But I went on a pickle craze because I love pickles. So I've made a different varieties. Um, in my pickles, I've used oak leaves. I'm looking for grape leaves, but since I don't grow grapes in my yard and I couldn't find any fresh ones at the store, I just kept with oak leaves. It's supposed to make them a little more firm. Um, oak leaves are a little more bitter from what my understanding is, but I, um, with the pickles, I've done some crazy creative things this year. I made a different varieties. Um, I made my own version of the bread and butter pickles without the sugar and, um, I put some onion and dill and garlic in some of them, um, turmeric, some I've done fresh organic turmeric, some I did organic turmeric powder, uh, mustard seeds. So I've just tried some different flavors and I the one thing I did this year that I haven't done in the past is I used the apple cider vinegar with my pickles and oh my gosh let me tell you it just added an elevated flavor to it I just thought they are yummy the one thing to know about pickles is if you're an electric free diet you must pressure cook them all and the only downfall with that is they're not going to be as firm unfortunately some of mine it, some of them are okay some of them are a little mushy and that's just the price I have to pay for what I have to do. So um, if you're not as sensitive to lectins, um, you could pressure cook it and just pressure cook it slightly, I guess. And then some of them, I tried that and they were a little more firmer. And then I grew some green beans in the garden. Green beans are also high in lectin. Um, and I haven't been able to eat them in a while, but I wanted to this year. And so I thought it'd be kind of fun to pickle them. So this, I did a crazy uh, green bean mix where I actually have onion and garlic in there and just kind of threw my own flavors in there because I like to do that. It's kind of fun just to experiment with flavors because that's what I do. And then finally, one of my favorites and something that I'm so excited that I've been able to um, have in my diet on um, occasion because it is inflammatory for me is salsa, <laughs> homemade salsa. I love salsa. I absolutely love salsa. Um, I love, tomatoes were always one of my favorite foods. So, uh, you know, like seven or eight years ago, my practitioner told me that I had to quit eating tomatoes and peppers and any nightshade vegetables. I was pretty bummed. But um, on occasion in the past, what I've done is just had a couple tomatoes here and there. I've always grown them in the garden. In the past, I used to sell them. And then I would just eat a couple cherry tomatoes here and there in my soup, even though I wasn't supposed to. Um, but I have made, uh, a couple years ago, made homemade salsa, and um, I just kind of came up with my own recipe. I, I, I like to have fun with it. I, I usually pressure cook the tomatoes. Um, if you can peel them and de them, they're better, especially if you're trying to get rid of the lectins, because that's where the lectins are on the tomatoes. But you have to pressure cook them. You absolutely must pressure cook them for a long time to get all the lectin out. And so um, with my salsa i do i this year i grew my own jalapenos and i grew my own peppers and i went to the store and got some organic onion organic garlic and i did some fun things i like to have a little fun and try different flavors and so i um with some of them i put some acorn squash in there it might sound kind of weird but it just gives a little bit of of sweetness so i took some you could take acorn or butternut or buttercup squash and just cut up in small pieces and put in there and it is really really tasty and then the other thing I did that was fun, it adds a kind of a dark or red color, as you can see the difference in color with my two salsas, is I took some beet from the garden and I just, um, you can put it right in there when you pressure cook it, but if you want to get this cool red color, you just, in the end, you stick um, just a little, couple little slices of beet right in the jar on the bottom and add it in there. And... Um, it makes it really pretty and it tastes really good too. I think the beet tastes really delicious. It's got that little sugary taste. Um, just You just put a little bit in there and it's really good. And let me tell you, I had one like this that had some acorn squash in it and some beet. And I, I added apple cider vinegar this year a little bit more than I normally do. And oh my gosh, the combination of the flavors was so delicious. Like I could have sat there and ate the whole jar just right then and there. It was so Dang, fantastic. Now what I do with my salsa, because um, again, I have to be real careful, is I I also, just like I do with the applesauce, I put it in ice cube trays and I freeze it. So I, I can it, and then when I want to can, I'll open it up 
and I put it in ice cubes and then I freeze it and then I keep that can in the freezer so it lasts longer and then I just put a cube in. Usually I like to put it in my salad or I might add it to my soup, just add a little kick to my soup when I make it. And so it's kind of a fun thing I do and it tastes so delicious. So anyway, um, I'm pretty much done with a lot of my canning this year. I, I'm still getting a few cucumbers and things like that. Um, so I, I have a few more pickles to make yet, but the main thing that I'm going to do is I am going to be probably canning uh, squash plants and pumpkins because squash is that's been kind of a staple for my um, diet for a long time and I was kind of bummed when I found out that I'm going to have to eliminate it unless I pressure cook it. So I'm going to be canning my squash and pumpkin and then using that in my cooking and soups and things like that. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. To prepare a jar for canning, first you want to sanitize and boil the jar. And then you want to add on your ingredients to add some flavor and to preserve it. So this is my adaptation to the uh, combination between the bread and butter and dill pickle recipe. And I do not use anything with sugar, so I made my own kind of funky, I don't know if you call it Middle Eastern flair to it or what. But this is just something new that I'm trying. So you want to add some mustard seed for the flavor. Um, I picked some oak leaves from my tree. So oak leaves uh, are supposed to help preserve the crispus, crispness of it. So I'm going to put a couple of those in there. Most people use pickling salt. I've heard people use wedges, another type of um, pickling flavor. Because I do everything organic and all natural, I use Himalayan crystal salt. So I am just going to, um, this is more digestible for me and better for me because of my food sensitivities. So I'm just going to put that, oh, like three-fourths a tablespoon of that in there. And what else do we need? We need some more dill because we want it to be nice and tart. So I'm just going to grab, I'm going to grab some of my dill and put it in there. Gives a nice tart flavor and makes it nice and sour and then I am just experimenting I've never done this before I've, I've put the turmeric root in there but I decided to add we had to ha happen to have a little bit of turmeric powder organic turmeric powder so I'm just going to put a tiny bit in there whoops that was a little more than I thought so this one's going to be kind of orange but so just a little bit of turmeric powder I just I thought it'd be kind of fun just to add an, an unusual flavor and then you want to make sure you have your vinegar component so I usually just dump a little vinegar in there when I use vinegar, I like to get the organic um, apple cider vinegar with the mother. All right, so I got all my um, cucumbers chopped up and put in the pot and spears. And then I like to experiment with weird, funky, crazy flavors. So today I have some white onion, some turmeric root. So this is my white onion. This is my turmeric root that I have. And then I have some garlic. So they're all organic. I chopped them up and I'm going to put them in there with some spears of organic dill as well. All right, here's my uh, crazy mixture of cucumber spears and herbs and spices. And I am going to add some water and pressure cook it for like about 10-15 uh, minutes just to get it to get the lectins out and get it ready for canning. All right, I have every, the water in there and I'm just going to add a splash of <clears throat> apple cider vinegar and I'm going to add more later to the actual jars but it's supposed to splash in there for flavor so we're going to get all these great flavors cooking and melting in together so it'll make an interesting flavored dish okay so this is what my instapot looks like and i got it going and i'm going to hit the pressure cook button here and then on the top here you see this is where the vent is so when the vent is in this position, that means it's shut. And then once um, it's pressure cooked, we'll release the pressure through there. We're all set. Okay, so this time I uh, cooked it just long enough to uh, hopefully remove the lectins, but still keep it firm. And so once we're done, we just take all this great mixture and we put it in our jar. You want to add in some liquid too so it's all the way to the top.
Now, if you have a canner, it's kind of like a pressure cooker, but it, it uh, pressure cooks in a the can. Then you can you would just put it in there, but we don't have one, so I do what's called a bath. All right, so I got my jars of uh, pickles all ready to go here, and I'm doing a um, canning bath right now. So you want to for about 10 or 15 minutes, you want to um, leave them in a bath of boiling water t to ensure that the um, seal is secure on your jars and then once they're done you want to leave them sitting out overnight for about a day or so and then you have the next day you test them and the ones that don't secure then you refrigerate and use those first all right i got all my uh, canning done for today i'm going to be doing some more tomorrow but i'm having fun and this was a crazy canning i did today and uh got lots more than this already done but we're uh having fun Thank you very much for joining us today. If you liked what you saw today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and then please be sure to hit the subscribe button below and then be sure to uh, hit the notification bell so that you can receive notifications on all of our future videos. We are on social media and you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the username Joyful Mama. Otherwise, we will also link that in the description below. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you later. Bye, Bye guys.